Kiris name? Kiris name. It is in a lap I'm going live for her story this evening. Her live storytelling. So I will sit and I will wait until I get an eye or two. When you come on, I was quite a few people said they'll come on this time, but I understand it doesn't suit all time zones. Hey Denny, how's it going? How's it going? How wonderful you to join. Thank you so much. Hey Rosalind, I recognize your picture. Say hi. Hey George, yay, I have new people today. Thank you so much for coming to support me. It means a lot. So um, I'll give another few minutes to see if anybody else pops on. Um, so all is good. Can you believe it? It's the end of March, March 31st. I don't know about you, but where did it go? Um, I see five eyes. If you want to say hi, say hi. If you don't, don't. You know what it's like. It's just very relaxed in here. I simply sit down and tell a story from my journals. So if you want to say hi that you're, you're, you're doing well, you're here, you made it to the end of March, well and good. Um, so I see a comment from um, Given. I don't see it in the live Given, so if you're not able to make it, that's okay, don't worry. But if you want to jump into the live, hey, there you go. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Um, so if you want to let me know where you're listening from, I really would be interested. This is a group that has been set up, goodness me, many, many months ago with regards to what I'm doing is education. So rejoicing in our differences through education and connecting through stories. So I worked all over the globe. I've actually worked on four continents. I've worked out two in the humanitarian sector and two in research and um, retail. So um, yeah, it's just, as I said, it's in to tell a story. I've been doing this now. This is my sixth one live. I have been sharing stories on my YouTube channel since November last year. No, since November 2020. So almost yeah, over a year actually. So so I have a few eyes. So I'm going to start. So just in case anybody doesn't know, um, I'm an international humanitarian and I worked across the globe, across the continents of Asia and Africa as a nutritionist and a consultant. And I kept, I show these every time, I kept real journals day-to-day -day journals. Part of it, majority of it was to process what I saw. I worked as a nutritionist, very much hands-on, measuring children for malnutrition and sometimes not malnutrition. Um, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of achieve, sense of achievement in the, in the work because I was enabling someone, someone to enable themselves. Um, I was taking the status of the children, taking a weight and height and working out if they were malnourished or not, and then writing reports and um, making recommendations. So these were kept day to day. There's a couple of days that have been combined. I'm writing these up to publish um, with a story of hope, a story of humanity and a story of generosity when the chips are down, when you may have nothing, but you always have something. So at the moment I am in Ethiopia um, and it's literally day by day. So I'm in Ethiopia. I started when I was doing my, hi Danielle, good to see you. I started my storytelling live when I was in Afghanistan and I've moved on to Ethiopia. I'm writing Angola and um, I didn't really, I must be honest, I must confess, I didn't write too much in March. I've had a big project going on so I haven't been able to but I'm going to kickstart that again in April. I'm very excited. So I've taken an extract from my typed up version and it's a coffee ceremony and I don't know if anybody on here has been in Ethiopia has worked in Ethiopia, has experienced a traditional coffee ceremony. Hey Laurie, I'm recognising photographs. I hadn't. Um, why am I not seeing comments? Ah, this happened a friend. Ah, got them now. Okay, folks, I'm going to go back and see. I didn't get them. Hi, George, South Sudan. Given very welcome. You know I've, I've worked there as well and lived there. Danielle, you're beyond inspiring. Oh, good place, thank you. Hey Laurie, we love you in a lap and oh, thank you very much, Denny. Um, we need more Unas in this world. Well, thank you. That's that's lovely to, lovely to hear. So at the minute, 
this is I, I did say at the end of my live last month I was going to step into Angola but I realized I shared an awful lot about Afghanistan so I wanted to share another little story about Ethiopia so it's the 17th of December and for anybody who hasn't been in I simply read my story and you can comment you can sit back with a cup of tea you can listen you can comment after it's me sharing my experiences of with a purpose and I talk about this often it's talk T is to think of others a is to appreciate what you have. L is to learn new cultures and perspectives. And K is to know, know more about the world. So I hope whoever is on this evening, and thank you very much for coming because I know everybody's busy. I hope you will talk after this. Think, appreciate, learn and know. Okay, so th Tuesday the 17th of December. Coffee ceremony. Up at 8 after a great sleep. I am excited about today as I will experience the famous coffee ceremony here. Damn it, I still need to buy coffee at the market before I leave. Get sorted and head off to do some training with the team. This has been ready for a while. D, my colleague, I give him the names obviously, is in his element. It is going well and we finish up after an hour, so we head back to the compound for the ceremony. I can feel myself get a little nervous and sad, as it is for me, and I'm not a fan of attention. It is a mark of friendship and respect and can take a few hours. So I get over the fact I don't like being the centre of attention. I'm really excited about this as I have heard so much about it. We drive in through the metal gates and wow, my colleagues have been busy. They're all smiling when they see me. Under our veranda of the house there is a purple and cream mat covered in all sorts and a table beside the door of the house with things on it too. We'll check it all out as I don't want to miss a beat. Having lived here for a while, not as long as I initially thought, I have learned the country is steeped in traditions and cultures. culture. I can just imagine there is a significance for every single thing here. The coffee ceremony is a long tradition here and is an integral part of social and cultural life. So I need and want to take all of it in. The smell hits me first, never mind the visuals. I can smell a really strong coffee aroma and frankincense, an all too familiar smell. The power of the sense of smell and memories and for a moment I'm instantly taken back to mass at home. The coffee beans are currently being roasted on a hot metal pan. The colours are changing from green to brown. Fascinating considering I drink coffee and never actually thought about where it came from. Hi Sarah! Ethiopia is famous for its coffee too. On the mat are a few colleagues sitting cross-legged, all smiling at me, with their shoes off. One of the ladies is wearing a multicoloured scarf draped around her neck. On the mat in front of them is long green grass, like palm leaves, only green, scattered randomly on the mat. On top of the grass, there is a box-like white container, like a little table, holding six white handle free cups. In front of the cups are two wooden, what look like pestle and mortars. One is filled with freshly popped popcorn and an empty one. This is where the freshly roasted coffee beans will be ground once they are cooled. So I'm told as I have, as I have a detailed look at all of this given. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic, absolutely, please do. I'd be great, Riven. Beside the cups, there is a bluey metal bucket coal stove with a traditional teapot sitting on hot coals containing water. This is where the beans will be added to make the coffee. Across the way, beside the door of the house, the table is holding homemade sweet bread, which was made to complement the coffee. The smell is amazing. The bread is round in shape and is the size of a 14 inch pizza. There is a gorgeous 3D pattern on the bread and it is all glossy. Can't wait to have some of that. So, the ground beans, coffee beans, are added to the water and we all wait and I just take this all in. The smells are so strong and we are outdoors. The steam appears and there are whoops. It is ready and it is time to pour the coffee. There is the traditional sounding squeals like, 
pain. Not of pain or shouting either, but of celebration. The teapot is held high above the cups and the pouring of the thick black strong coffee takes place and more smells are released. Ethiopian coffee is really aromatic, hence why I want to buy some and take some home. It is really strong, like an instant caffeine injection, strong and bitter. So I do take the offered sugar, even though I don't usually take sugar, but no milk. They don't have milk with the coffee. We all toast to each other and I teach them all slancha. And I'm glad I have the sugar. Slancha is cheers in Irish. Wow, what a hit. It almost sticks to my teeth. It is that thick and boy, it is strong. I almost believe I'm shaking from the caffeine hit. We break the bread, which I didn't want to do, but it is part of the ceremony. So of course it is broken and we pass pieces about. It is sweet and it really does complement the coffee. The popcorn is great too. All these new things I never knew. It is just lovely experiencing this and I think to myself how lucky I am. A memory for the memory bank. Back to reality and why I am here. I have a quick lunch as the ceremony was a while. Plus I am full of sweet bread and the coffee has numbed my appetite. And I head back to the office for training. Training is complete and I now have nothing to do. Yikes, I'm not a person to have nothing to do. You all know that. Finally head to town around 4pm and it isn't pleasant as there, as there are children everywhere. And I am once again being followed and spoken to. It is a life, so I suck up the attention. Please come to South Sudan too, please. I've been there. I'll come back. I was there with the World Food Programme, given I was based in Janina for a few months. That was an experience in South Sudan. Back to the house and decide to cook this evening for a change. Ragu, which is just okay. I suppose my mouth is still tasting of the coffee. Chill out for the rest of the evening. No rum, as yesterday was long, and I did a lot. I will repeat what I did exercise wise tomorrow which is running on the spot in my room for lots of reasons bed at 9 p.m and as i'm off to the field tomorrow for the last time i am up early must buy coffee that's it so it's a short one tonight um that was my experience of the coffee ceremony I'm trying to condense it all into a day um and I suppose that is my draft one. I have Denny, if you're still on Denny. Um, he also is a, is a writer and you don't produce a book by first draft. So that's, that's the coffee ceremony. It was such a privilege and honour. It lasted about two hours. Now these normally can last a lot longer. They normally do last a lot longer. Um, but it was in between my day and the staff, my friends wanted to honour me with that tradition. Um, I still drink coffee, but not Ethiopian coffee. I don't know if anybody's actually drink, drinks Ethiopian coffee. It's very, very strong and it's very, very dark. It's like treacle almost. Um, I know, Sarah, you're on. I know you have your um, little coffee in the morning. What is that called? Your um, espresso in the morning to waken you up and to keep you awake. So that's the espresso. Yes, thank you, Sarah. Um, it is good to learn about different experiences. Hi, Alex. How are you? Good to see you. Lovely listening. On my nightly bike ride to Derry, keep her lit. You are inspirational. Uh, Alex, thank you. It's been a long time, mate. How's it going? Alex and I shared a stage in January this year. Last year. What month are we in? March. Last year. In the Black Box in Belfast. We had five minutes to talk about our inspiration, our theme. Mine was gratitude. And Alex has a fantastic group up in Derry. London Derry with regards to education and youth very out with outdoor sports so it's fantastic please Alex drop a link with your group that you have up in up in Derry hey as I say yes espresso love it and I'll tell you a funny story when I um my sister Sarah's on hi Sarah um she lived lives in Switzerland she has two homes Switzerland and France but good evening Dr Muslim hello salam alaikum good to see you online Dr Muslim um Hey RJ, good to see you too. 
good to see you too. Good morning in the Philippines. Um, I know my friend watching from the Philippines. I know, I know you're on your Thursday. We're still on Wednesday night. So I went to see my sister Sarah in Geneva and I didn't know about it. I didn't know about an espresso machine. And it's a little silver espresso machine you put on the hob or gas and you have a small cup. But what I did is I actually consumed a complete mug, like 210 mils of coffee. Needless to say, I couldn't leave the, the apartment all day. I had the shakes. I had, you can imagine what I had. Nice to see, nice to, nice. I don't see you, Dr. Mithlin, but it's lovely. I'm, I'm honored for you to be here. I don't know what time it is in Iraq. I know it's very early in the morning. Maybe you're, maybe you're working. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I, I hope you and your family are safe. Um, so yeah, that coffee was an experience. So, you know, we all drink it. Well, I drink it. I have my Americano in the morning. It gets me going in the morning and, um, I enjoy it, but I never actually thought about where it came from. I knew it came from a coffee bean, um, but I never actually thought about it. So that day for me, it was, it was very special. And the beans that I did eventually buy in the market, which I did do, um, were green like they are. So I don't know if anybody's ever actually roasted their own beans, but so I brought them home to Belfast and then I roasted them in a very, very old pan my mum had at the time. It has to get extremely hot for them to roast, not burn, <laughs> roast, and then you grind them. It's about 11 p.m. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. You're still up. Thank you, Dr. Muslim. Um, so you grind them and then you make the most wonderful coffee with sugar. I don't normally take sugar, but no milk. And that's one of the things I learned that day. I am talking about learning you different, different things and know more about the world. You don't add milk to Ethiopian coffee. I suppose you can, but traditionally you don't. I mean, you usually don't add milk to an espresso or whatever. Martina, hello, my sister. You've missed my story, but you can catch it up. It's wonderful to have you here, Martina. And it's wonderful. Martina is, a, is a, another sister of mine, but not biological. She's a family friend sister. Um, I am part of a basketball family, believe it or not. Yes, I'm small. Good things come in small packages. And Martina Connolly, now Gallagher, for a long time, is like a sister to me and all my sisters and my brothers. So lovely just to have you on, Martina. Thank you so much. So um, if you have any questions or queries, I know this time sometimes doesn't suit Australia's. I know that because a friend of mine has told me so. So I'm considering doing a second one mid-month um yes <laughs> next dr muslim decaf without sugar good man um and i know your tea i know iraqi tea that's another experience which i will talk about when i get to that when i get to iraq so at the minute i'm in ethiopia i've typed about halfway through angola which is different i know they're both african countries but they're very different i mean there are 53 54 African countries on the African continent. So I've typed up half Angola and then from Angola, I am pulled into Iraq. Saddam Hussein fell in the March 2002. Muslim, I know, I know you, you will never forget that. And I was in, in the April 2002, a month later, the first time I was in Iraq twice. So. That is about a year and a half on and off. So that's going to take me some time to type this up. And this, this is, I mean, I know it was many years ago, but I close my eyes and I'm back there. I mean, Dr. Muslim, it's been many, many years since I've seen you in, in Iraq, but I close my eyes and I'm, I'm, I'm back there in your presence. I'm back there and enjoying a stikan, as it's called, a stikan of tea. The Iraqi tea, Dr. Muslim, if you want to correct me, is in a little small glass. It's about that tall. It's about that wide, yeah, it's called a stecan, and it is dark black tea, and it has a third sugar, two thirds tea. There's actually not enough liquid in the tea, in the stecan, to dissolve the sugar. You never say no, because that is not what you do, and um, so there's many a days I would have had a couple of stecans of tea, strong black tea with sugar and as an international and as a guest if the family had they would have also given me sugar coated uh, almonds 
So you have the sugar from the almonds and the sugar from the tea. So you can imagine. That's why one of my nicknames when I was in Afghanistan was Energizer Bunny. Because I would have an, I would have and still have a lot of energy. But you give the dark tea, you give the, the, the dark coffee. You know, I have a lot of energy. I'm energized from it. So I won't be having a coffee at the minute because it's, it's 20 past nine here in Belfast. So that's that's my story for um, March, which is hard to believe. It's it's over. March is almost over. And Sarah's on. And my niece, my only goddaughter, my only godchild, is turned 17 today. Seven, it's Deacon, yes. It's a Turkish word, I think. Okay, there you go. I didn't know that. So this Deacon is a Turkish word. And that's the little glass that you would have your tea in. Well, I had in Iraq. You may have it in other countries, but I had it there. So, so Sarah, wishing live, wishing Olivia a happy 17th birthday. I know I sent her a voice message. And um, Olivia was actually born when I was in Baghdad. She wasn't in Baghdad. <laughs> she was in France with her mummy, Sarah, my sister. And I'll tell the final story before I go. And unless there's no comments, I know some people, hi, Nana. So I know, Alex, you're on your bike. But this whole idea is to listen to the story, I suppose. So I don't mind. It, it, it may continue on, if you don't mind. So in, I was based in Iraq. I was based in Nazaria my first time, which is in the south, which was very close to the front line. Um, lots of buildings, including the building I was in, had bullet holes and things. Very, very close to the front line at the time. And then I went back in a second time and I lived in Samawa in the south. But then I went to Baghdad. I lived in Baghdad for six weeks. Um, my parents didn't know that at the time. I told them a week. Why and how could I tell them I was going to Baghdad for six weeks when it was, the country was shaking. Like black hawk, helicopters in the sky, um, being searched, being stopped, bombs, everything. It was chaotic. And, um, and I lost my train of thought. Why was I telling them about Baghdad? What, does, was anybody listening and forgotten the story about Baghdad? So I was in Baghdad and um, forgotten now. You can tell it's live. I was in Baghdad. Why was I telling the story? Yes, remembered. So you live upstairs. Olivia is being born. The office was downstairs in the office. Muslim, if you remember this, the office was downstairs. And the sleeping quarters for myself and my colleagues were upstairs. And that's... The connection it, when I was in, in Samoa. Yes, I remember it, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Getting carried away by my stories. I'm doing a Billy Conley. He goes off and then comes back. So, and also when I was in Samoa, when I was based with ACTED, a French non governmental organization, the office was one side of the house and you crossed a corridor with a curtain and that was the sleeping quarters. So you lived in the same compound as you worked. So that took, I took a lot of mental. Um, concentration and, and I remember it very very vividly very very well that's what you did so you didn't commute you didn't leave the building unless you went out for a walk in the compound because walking during the day just wasn't possible the house was in Kar where is it? Karada, Baghdad yeah you remember it Muslim, Dr Muslim so I was upstairs and it was hurry in Baghdad at the time and I squealed because I got an email. I got a message. There was no mobiles. I didn't have any mobiles at the time. That Olivia was born. And I got a picture of her. And she was a big, big baby with black, black hair. Good prep for lockdown. Yes, that's why I suppose I, I took to it a lot easier than maybe others. Because I remember working downstairs, living upstairs. Although at the time I was single. So I squealed. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And some colleagues came out to the bottom of the stairs. The rule was, well, not the rule, but the etiquette was you didn't go up the stairs unless unless you were called up because that was sleeping quarters. That was our home. That was our space to get away from work. So I squealed, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. And some of the colleagues came to the bottom of the steps and I realised, oh, my God, what have I done? I was excited Olivia was born, but I then realised and remembered where I was. I was in Baghdad and the city was shaking. So I came to the top of the stairs and I said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'm a new auntie, I'm a new auntie. And then I came down and I showed them the pictures and we celebrated together and everybody was, oh, fantastic, fantastic. And I've told Olivia this story and Sarah, you can let her listen to this if you want. 
that was when she was born. So I was ecstatic, naturally, as a new auntie. And Livy was born and she was healthy and Sarah was doing well. Everything had gone to plan. But then that's when you kind of forgot. And I've talked about this before. Sometimes you almost forgot where you were because it was where I lived. It was my home. I had my face creams. I had my slippers. I had my duvet. I had my blankets. It's where I lived. I didn't visit it. I lived there. So I just had forgotten. I was excited that my niece was born. I turned out then to be my, god, my goddaughter. But it was that almost like 10, 15 seconds of, oh my God, I need to let people know that I'm okay because anything could happen upstairs because things were all over the place. And when I was in Iraq, I did have to go to the green zone um, because I had a sore back. Something else was discovered, but I had a sore back. So, I mean, it was, it was hairy. Wonderful story. Her life can be magic, magical despite circumstances sometimes. Yes. I mean, through all my stories, there's there's positivity and there's hope. And, you know, I, I don't dwell on, I mean, in Ethiopia, I saw stuff that I've, some of it in my journals, some of it I, I, I will not disclose because you see it on the TV. But I did see poverty. I did experience severely malnourished children, Marasmus, Koshio, Kor, people having nothing. But the flip side, that's what I talk about. And that's what I share. And that's what I hope you all get from these stories is they're just me or Sarah or George or Alex or Muslim or Nana or Laurie in another city where something's happened to them, not by choice. So it's the human element of humanitarian. And that's what I portray. I hope I portray. And the detail is to take you there. I, I need, I feel I need the detail to take you there. Oh, Joe, hello, hello, hello. I thought I recognised your picture. The chapel, I think, or the building. Joe and Honour, thank you so much for coming on tonight. It really is. I've had some new people on and it's brilliant. Thank you so much. So the idea is through all these stories, there's a human thread. I'm human, you're human. Um, hi, Eileen, how are you? Good to see you. Unfortunately, the story's over. We're just having a bit of a chat, but you can catch it up on, you can catch it up on, on catch up. Thank you so much for coming to the, Come on to listen tonight. So the idea is to take you on a journey and to talk. Think of others. Appreciate what you have. We learn your different customs, new cultures and perspectives and know more about the world. So tonight you thought now of Ethiopians, you thought of Iraqis because I've talked about a couple. It's okay, Eileen, no problem. I'm delighted you're here. Thank you so much for coming. You can catch it up. Thank you so much for coming. It's brilliant. You're new to the group, so very much, very much welcome. A, I appreciate what you have. You know, I've talked about a couple of scenarios where people have nothing and they don't have their health, they don't have the nutrition because the children are malnourished. So learn new different cultures and perspectives. The tea might have been something new. I know someone said it was very, very new. And the idea of, of when I lived in, in Iraq and those perspectives of someone screams, someone shouts, and usually it isn't a good outcome. Sorry, Dr. Muslim, with respect, you know I, I share this with respect. For me, then, it was my niece being born. And know more about the world. So now, from this story, and the little bit of a snippet into the Iraq, the Iraqi story, you know more about the world. So, unless anybody has anything, anything to add or anything to say, that is me. I am going to consider doing one mid-month, potentially earlier. No, either earlier or later, just depends. I just picked the last day of the month. Sometimes it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whatever night it is, I do it. I have committed for the whole year and I know you enjoy it because you tell me and I will continue to do it. Excuse me. And I will continue to type up my journals. So this is, this is my Ethiopian Angola. Um, last year I went through it all and I did my I lifted things out that, that were special to me. It's okay, very nice story. Thank you, Dr. Muslim. Very, very, I'm very, very culturally aware, very, very culturally sensitive, very, very mindful of culture and customs and always, always, always respectful. So that instance, you know, in a space of 15 to 20 seconds, it was a joyous moment when I learned about Livy being born. There was worry from the staff and then I went back to joyous. I f forgot where I was for a few seconds because of the good news. 
sometimes it isn't almost good news so that is me I mean I do fly the flag some of you may know I am the world I am concerned worldwide ambassador on a voluntary basis and just to do a little bit of a plug I did the refugee ration challenge last year and the year before I've done it twice I'm doing it again this year in June um, to raise awareness for the plight of refugees and to raise money as well but for me it's it's very much about awareness what refugees are expected to eat in a refugee camp the camp that the money goes towards for this particular challenge is in Jordan and a lot of the refugees are from Syria and it's the 10 year anniversary this year of, of the, what started in, in Syria so not to get too heavy but when I had my friend um, fill in mid-month talking about his book there is a serious side to this and I'm not taking away from the seriousness of humanitarian work but what I want to bring with my stories is, is hope and the human element of it that no matter what we go through no matter how little we have we still can be kind and we still can be generous I mean you boil it down when I sat in rooms with women in Afghanistan who removed their burqas or women in Iraq who moved their Abayas and we sat and the scarves were off and my scarf as well. We were women in a room talking about women issues, female issues, just from different countries. And that's what I want to do. So yes, there's, of course, it's humanitarian scenarios, earthquakes, war, mudslides, uh, so on and so forth, pandemics, what we're living through. Um, but there's the human element that I, I don't want to be lost because behind the picture is a story and behind me are my stories. So that's it for this evening. So I'll keep in touch. Great, Eileen, great to sharing stories and writing up your journal. Look forward to the next one. Thank you so much, Eileen. I look forward to you being in the group. So I'm focusing very much on my stories at the moment. I'm writing up my journals. I mean, this month is brilliant for me, absolutely brilliant as a writer because well it was February I became an international number one international bestseller with my um with my anth the anthology I was in Break Free to Peace Joy and Unity and then just last week I officially became a published poet in another anthology I wrote a poem called Globalization and how we've all reconnected and connected in this world during this pandemic so this I feel is a way to connect it certainly is a way to connect to my sister who's online who we we haven't seen each other for a very long time, which is not normal. But um, so it's a way to it's a way to connect. So I will continue to write, and my book I will, my book will be published. And I know you will enjoy the stories, and just from the human element, just to see how others are across the world, and to remember we're all in this together. We all share the globe. So on that note, thank you all very much. I'm just going to go up and see. Thank you, everybody, because you took the time. To come and listen so if you're still on I'll just there's Denny who was given there's Danielle there's George Laurie hey Laurie um uh Danielle Sarah Alex Muslim Dr Muslim RJ Martina and Joe and Eileen so and I think I saw I can see Nana's picture as well. So thanks guys. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for staying on. Let me know your thoughts. And as I say, I'm gonna try and do I'll think about maybe doing one mid month, either earlier or later, for my friends in Australia because they want to to hear me live. It's a little bit different compared to a playback, but that was my story. Coffee ceremony in Ethiopia. And until next month, until next time, have a lovely rest of your evening or day wherever you are in the world. Bye for now, I really, really appreciate your support. So thanks a million, bye bye.